So my voice is about to give out. I have been teaching all day and my poor voice is just about dead, but I've got a yummy cup of tea and I have got to make it through this video because I want to tell you about everything that I read in December. So my little sticky note here tells me that I read 51 books in December. That seems a little ridiculous. I'm not even sure if that's right. <laughs> Apparently that's right, 51 books. Okay, 27 of those were children's picture books. Eight of those were middle grade fantasy. I read three nonfiction, three children's books, two middle grade sci-fi, and eight graphic novels. All right, before we dive into all of those, I'm gonna reach back here to our booktuber shout out book. And we're gonna shout out somebody randomly. Today's shout out goes to Lost in a Bookcase. I'll leave a link to their channel over in the description, so be sure to go over and subscribe to them. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up and follow me over on Instagram and Twitter and Goodreads and all the social media places. Okay, let's see. So first of all, let's get out of the way that I read all of the Chronicles of Narnia in December. I'm going to do a whole separate video about that. I actually already filmed a vlog while I was reading them, and I've got a lot of things to say about how much I love Chronicles of Narnia. So be on the lookout for that video coming soonish, <laughs> sometime. <clears throat> Not having a lot of time these days to film or edit, so I'm, I'm really hoping that video will get up eventually, but um, yeah, no promises as to when. I also read The Man Born to be King by Dorothy Sayers as part of a read-along with Christy over at Dostoevsky in Space and, and some other co-hosts and some other co-readers, I don't know, other people that were reading it as well. I mainly joined because she was reading it and I was like, oh, I want to read it along with her. And I got to chat with some people a little bit in the um, Discord server that they had set up to talk about the book. This is a collection of radio plays about the life of Christ from his birth all the way to his crucifixion and resurrection. This is really, really interesting to have kind of this like historical fiction because it's based off historical facts, but then it's fictionalized with you know, dialogue that's imagined and even extra characters that they've kind of imagined in to the story. So this was very, very interesting. I gave it five stars. I have so many things that I want to say about this that I think I'm going to do a separate video talking about the man born to be king. There's just so many layers and so many different so many different things I want to say about it. It was just so fantastic, but too much to say in this video. So I'm going to save it for another video. Coming soonish. <laughs> soonish, because I don't know when I'll get to it. <laughs> I read The Christmas Doll by Elvira, Elvira Woodruff. This is a really cute little children's story. Um, it's not a picture book, it's a children's chapter book. It's about Lucy, who is terrified that her little sister, Glory, is going to die of a sickness that is going around the orphanage. So Lucy decides it would be better for them to escape and live on the streets rather than stay in the orphanage and be exposed to this illness. And one day they find an old doll among the trash of the river, and the doll changes their fortunes. It's their Christmas doll. This was a really sweet story. It was just so adorable, and I loved the close relationship between the two sisters. It was really, really just so Christmassy and cute, and I gave it four stars. So I finally finished reading the Dragonback series by Timothy Zahn. I read the fifth book, Dragon and Judge, and I read the sixth book, Dragon and Liberator. I can't really tell you a lot about these books without giving spoilers because, you know, it's the last books in a series. <laughs> Suffice it to say that it is action-packed and full of so many different mysteries and twists and turns and epic space battles, and the ending was just, like, so satisfying. It was so good. It really has you guessing right up to the end, and it just, the suspense, man, and the tension and everything. It was so fabulous. I gave both of these books five stars. This is such a cool series. All the rest of the books in this video are books that I received from a publisher for free in exchange for a free and honest review. I read Clarice Bean, Think Like an Elf. So this is part of the Clarice Bean 
series, but I've never read anything else by Clarice Bean, but it was easy to just dive right in in the middle of the series. It was no problem. So Clarice is worried that her family is losing their Christmas spirit. Her grandmother tells her to think like an elf and find ways to serve and give and find ways to help people like an elf would do. So she finds little things to do to help her neighbors and to serve her family members and ways to help around the house. And she, of course, discovers that Christmas spirit is not in the gifts that you give. It's all about showing others that you care. This is a really cute book. Clarice Bean is such a weird little kid. She has her own perspective and I love that. I was a weird little kid with my own weird perspective. So it's really fun. I just loved all her little quirks. It was so adorable. I gave this book four stars. I read Duck's Backyard. Duck lives all alone in her backyard until um, one day a blind chicken wanders into the yard and they decide to go on a quest together to find like the fountain of youth or something i forget the only thing is duck has a wonky leg and she has to use a crutch to get around so a duck with a wonky leg and a blind chicken set off on this adventure together and they help one another and it is so funny and cute and weird it's definitely a very weird story um, but I gave it four stars. It's really funny. I read a book from the Jasper and Scruff series, The Cafe Competition. So apparently this is like the last book in the series. <laughs> and then I asked the publisher, wait a minute, what about the rest of the series? Please send me the rest of the series. So they did. So I'm going to be reading more Jasper and Scruff, but I'm, I'm reading them backwards. Apparently I started from the last book. So Jasper the cat and Scruff the dog have their own restaurant where they have their own special signature dish. It's a cheese sandwich. <laughs> but then a fancy restaurant opens up across the street and it seems like they have stolen the recipe for the famous cheese sandwich and restaurant battles ensue. This is such a funny, such a funny book. I mean, it's just hilarious and the illustrations are so cute. I just thought it was so funny. This really had me laughing. I mean, like laughing out loud. I gave it five stars. And of course I requested the publisher to send me the rest of the books. Like, you know, I loved it when I'm asking the publisher, please send me more. <laughs> so much fun. I read Gustav and Henri. These two friends are playing when they, uh, I guess they're playing badminton or something, but they lose the shuttlecock. And they think, well, it, we can't find it anywhere, so it must have been thrown into outer space. <laughs> so they construct a spaceship and they track their missing badminton, shuttlecock, whatever, to the moon. But a greedy space crab has claimed their shuttlecock as a crown. And he's now calling himself king of the moon and the two friends have to scheme of how to get back their missing sports equipment. <laughs> this is just a wild ride. Like it's just random, completely random, really imaginative stuff. They meet all these weird creatures on the moon and you just never know what's gonna happen next. And there's like this crazy time travel and it's just, it's so weird and crazy. I gave it five stars. I thought it was hilarious. I mean, this, this is really cute and funny. I also read the graphic novel, Old Things. So Benji and his grandmother go on a grocery shopping trip but she's very confused because the shops don't seem to be in the places that she remembers them being. She remembers the old days when she was young and she knew the shopkeepers. She has a lot of trouble adjusting to the modern world and she's just kind of lost in her memories of the old ways. This is definitely an interesting graphic novel. The grandmother is not polite. She is kind of rude to people sometimes and she's not reasonable. Her grandson tries to reason with her and say, well, you know, that shop moved or that's not the way people do things nowadays, but she will not listen. Her memories are what shape her thinking. And we get these flashbacks to her youth. So you can definitely see like her reasons for the way that she behaves and thinks are rooted in her past. And it's like, it makes sense in her world it makes sense you know but somehow still i just didn't really enjoy it um it's definitely an interesting look at the generation gap and how difficult it is to adjust as the years go on 
and things keep changing and you don't change. <laughs> I didn't really care for the artwork and some of the direction that the story took was just like, eh, I don't really care about that. Um, so I ended up giving it three stars. Still really good, but not, not amazing. I read Thunderous, a graphic novel about a young girl, um, Ayana, who is tired of hearing the Lakota stories about her ancestors. She wishes that her family would just focus on the modern world, but they are all caught up in these legends and heritage of the Lakota tribe. But she suffers a fall and she is transported to the world of Lakota legends. And she has to go on a quest to find her way back to the real world. I did really, really love that this is just saturated in Native American history and heritage and these legends and everything. It was very cool learning about this rich culture. And it was really fun kind of learning about the mythology and everything. However, I didn't really care for the art style. It's just kind of just very basic and cartoonish, and there wasn't really anything special about the art. And the story is good, but it doesn't really flow in a natural way. The plot is very simplistic. The pacing is kind of disjointed. Probably a child reading this book would not notice, but I feel like it just could have been a little bit of a tighter plot, a little tighter of a story. So I ended up giving it three stars. Really good, but not, not the best. I also read Fear Book Club. This is about Wit, who joins the yearbook club and he takes some pictures around school. But when he develops the pictures, there are children standing in the background that were not there in real life. So he starts to think there could be ghosts haunting the school and they're showing up on the film. With the help of his fellow students, he begins to investigate missing children who have gone missing at the school over the years. And he discovers that there are ghosts that are trapped in the shadow realm. This was right on the line of slightly too creepy for me. I do not like stuff that is too scary. And it was like, it was fine. It didn't give me nightmares, but it was like a little smidge too scary for me. <laughs> I feel like it would be too scary for little kids. Unless you super like being scared, then you might like it. <laughs> there is this one scene where they do a seance to try to communicate with the ghosts. And that was like, uh, I don't know about this. This is, no, that's getting a little too gross for me now. The art is really excellent. And I loved the use of color and shadows and everything. Very cool. And I really loved how all the yearbook kids really come together to like figure out this mystery of the ghosts. And they really band together and support one another. They're just this funny group of misfits, you know, but it was like, now they're a team. So the story was really good. The art was really good. A little too scary for me, though. So I ended up giving it three stars. I read Big Alien Moon Crush, which is a children's graphic novel that has no words. The only words are like crash, boom, bang. It, that's the only words in the whole in the whole thing. So two aliens of different species fall in love in the middle of a war. And against impossible odds, they try to convince their families that they should live together in peace. The artwork is so expressive and the panels make the action so clear that you really don't need words. It's just, it's so expressive and good. The story is really hilarious and cute and I just thought it was so fun and I gave it five stars. I also read Peach and the Isle of Monsters. So Peach was magically born from inside of a peach. But she's never really fit in with the other villagers. Her adopted father gives her a sword and sends her off on a quest to kill the monsters that have apparently been terrorizing their village. Along the way, Peach meets other warriors who are on their way to the Isle of Monsters, and she discovers that there is a mystery that goes far beyond just the monsters. Then in this volume, there's also a second story where Peach meets a mystical monkey that glows, and there's pirates that are after this monkey, and she kind of gets embroiled into their adventures. The two plots are kind of random and convoluted. There's like all this stuff going on and you're just like, how does that connect? It doesn't. And the stories include like a lot of exposition and just explaining things. And so the actual plot moves kind of slowly. Even with all the exposition, the plot doesn't always make sense. The characters are just one dimensional. Peach is a fun character, but nobody else really has any depth. 
I did like the art. It's really beautiful, um, really colorful. So I ended up giving this one three stars. I wish the storyline was better, but the art was really cute. Okay, that's it for December. My voice is really about to die. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know what was one of your favorite books that you read this past month. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and remember the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world.